Hello everybody and welcome to this video where I'm going to be playing a game called Transport Fever which if anyone knows is a game that's very much of a the, the sort of SimCity transport tycoon railroad tycoon genre type game where basically you are responsible for setting up your own transport network with the main aim to shift as many people and passengers as you can to the various different towns and cities that adorn the map and move as much freight, goods, materials etc as well around the map to the various different towns and cities on the maps so that they can actually grow and expand which will therefore increase the amount of population in each of the areas which in turn increases the amount of passengers you can then ship and transport to various different places and thus hopefully make lots and lots of money lots of profitability now this is a custom map this isn't part of the regular transport fever game this is a custom map that a another youtuber produced and did a series on and to be quite honest, I quite like this the look of this map. It's quite interesting that you've got an abstract sort of North American East Coast, if you like, from, well, basically it runs from way up north, you know, and you come down, you've got Port Nelson, you've got Toronto, Chicago, obviously not very geographically accurate. You've got New York, Kansas City, Charlotte and Atlanta, and then obviously Miami down here. Then you move across the Atlantic Ocean, or what he has dubbed the Atlantic Ocean. You've got Ireland, and obviously Great Britain, with Scotland and England represented only by Edinburgh and Dublin. Obviously Wales isn't a feature in this map. You then got obviously your sort of Scandinavian countries, you've got Stockholm and Tromsø and Copenhagen. Then you move into sort of main Europe, if you like, Western Europe. You've got Paris, Berlin, Zurich, Nantes, Toulouse, lots of French cities. So how come France gets three cities? That's a bit, seems a bit. And Britain only gets two? London and Edinburgh? I'm surprised they didn't put another one in the middle. Yeah. Obviously it wasn't a British person that made this map. You've got Rome, Algiers, and obviously Madrid down here on this little spiny bit. So the plan will be for me to link up some of these, well hopefully all of these cities eventually, and have routes for people and goods to move. Now, upon starting a map, the first thing you kind of want to do is find a place where you can either get lots of passengers. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is have a look at my populations. The biggest town or city is Berlin. That's got the most people. Closely followed by New York, then Paris, then Edinburgh, then Madrid. Hmm. So straight away, and I can see further down, you've got your Kansas City, Charlotte. Your American cities are a little bit slightly lower populated. So if I was going to put in, obviously to start with, and to try and make the most amount of profit and generate an income as quickly as I possibly can. The way for me to do this, to start with, would be to set up a passenger train system between Paris and um, Berlin and get passengers and people moving quite quickly between the two, two cities. That would be a very quick way of making sure I've got an income coming in. And I can also, I mean, Nantes has only 150 people, but if I can run a, a train line down to them, 
and get some of the people from Berlin and Paris moving into here and get some of these people moving into there again we've got a route um, where was Zurich? Zurich, mm, that's there but it's kind of not because its population's quite small and obviously we've got Madrid down here where was Rome? Rome's got 403 so I did Toulouse, was Toulouse a popular place? no that's only got 200 as well um, so yeah your passenger route is pretty much going to be probably Berlin, Paris, Nantes, Toulouse, Madrid and hopefully distribute the people from Berlin, Paris and Madrid a bit more evenly across the, the number of cities. Um, we also, to expand cities and get cities to grow, we need to um, supply them with goods and materials. Now, I'm looking at the industry, we've got a chemical plant which takes oil and grain, or grain, and ore, that's an and ore, that's an ore symbol in this game, sorry. So you can either supply oil or grain and it'll produce plastics. Uh, we've got the crude oil refinery which takes crude oil and turns it into oil and fuel but what I don't appear to see oh no we've got a crude oil an oil well there so again as a freight route I would need to ship from here crude oil to here to have it refined into oil and fuel ship the fuel into a city for its industry if I pull up because again you, 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 your cities are divided into if you've ever played a city skyline sim city game you'll be familiar with residential areas commercial areas and industrial areas and basically as we can see if we click on an industrial building they need construction material machines and fuel to develop and expand so obviously we can provide them with fuel from here quite reasonably quickly um, machines we could get from over here from the factories but they are going to need to be provided with planks or steel to produce tools planks and steel to produce machines or steel and plastic to produce machines so again I would have to ship my oil from here to here to turn it into plastics and then ship the plastics to here to make that a profitable little empire I would also need uh, what's that that's an ore mine so I would need coal and ore to produce the steel that I would need to make the machines I've got stone here which I could pump into there which would enable me to make and I could take the slag produced as a byproduct of the steel business and put that into here which will enable me to make the construction materials so yeah this little area here has got quite a few of the, the materials I need to get started and again I've got things like factories here which can take planks and plastics or planks and steel and produce goods goods are useful because if I go into a city let's take Paris here as an example they need goods to sell which will enable commercial to grow same as tools if you provide tools commercial can grow and you've got food here as well now food, we have got a food processing plant which requires grain and livestock or live, grain or livestock again that's an ore symbol um, to produce food now what I need, I've got two processing plants here but it would seem I am missing a farm there's another processing plant 
logs there. There's a farm. So there's a farm near Madrid, but that is going to be incredibly expensive to ship from there to there or there at this point in time. Um, we've got forests which can provide logs, but I don't see anywhere on here that will take those logs and produce planks. There's another forest there, so again I'm missing plank production. Uh, we've got plank production there, so... And we've got forest there, so actually I could ship from there to there. And then maybe, I don't know, maybe a harbour would be a smart thing. If we had like um, a, a sea freight, a cargo facility lot, like this. And we, you know, we've got a cargo harbour. We could put a cargo harbour somewhere on here and ship planks over to here, which would be ideal for our factory in time, but obviously that's something to do a little bit further down. I'm trying to see what else we've got. Obviously we've got food up here. We've got, well, we've got grain and livestock production there. We've got a food processing place just north of Dublin, so I could ship that down. I'm not sure why I've got a bridge. Why have I got two bridges? I could probably bulldoze that, actually, I'm thinking. And maybe look at, maybe putting in a, a rail. A rail system would be very good, actually, thinking about it. If I put in a cargo station here, and here, I might have to do some, or up here even. I need, still need to stop down here. To get, I could get food into Edinburgh, which would help Edinburgh grow quite quickly, and I could get food into Dublin. So I, I would need to put in a station here and here, and have trains running backwards and forwards delivering livestock and grain into here, and then taking the food. And from here, actually, from there, I, I, I could pretty much use the road. I could put in a like a a road depot, for example, a truck station, and just ship the food into Dublin via truck, and maybe ship it back via truck to Edinburgh. Another way to do it. If I didn't want to use the expense of trains, straight off the bat would be truck station here, truck station down here, truck the food, the livestock, the raw materials down to the, the processing plant, then on the way back take food and drop into Edinburgh. If that makes sense. That way, the vehicles on this line aren't going to be, you know, if I just have them taking food, if I had trains running down to there and then had trucks going from here into the city, the half the, you know, they're taking food into the city, but then when they're coming back, they're empty, which means they're not actually making me any money they will be costing me money in sort of running costs and stuff. So actually, it would probably be more feasible financially to have trucks run down here and then bring food back and drop off here. As they come back to think that way, they're actually carrying stuff in two, both directions, if that makes sense. And that would get those two cities pretty pretty well sort of um, fed from the start 
Looking at North America, we've got we've got all there and all there. We don't have any coal, so we're not going to be making any steel. We don't have any stone, so we're not going to be making construction materials. We do have logs, so we can make planks, but. Without the rest, we're kind of limited. Um, we've got farms, so we could make food. We've got a couple of refineries, but no oil wells. We've got an oil well there. It's going to be tough to squeeze him around Port Nelson and around the farms because what I don't want to do is run when you start trying to put trains and roads in it will try and remove fields and that can be very 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 expensive and you, I don't really want to do that so to get oil I mean I could go to that one there that's probably the closest, but let's have a look at the terrain. Oh, the terrain's pretty flat, actually. So it's not going to cost me a lot in track to run from there to there. I would think maybe road shipping via road is perhaps the most cost-effective way to get from there to there I think if I had a, I could put a cargo terminal in here so for example something like let's get this going so something like a cargo like a, a cargo station if I spin that around because that's the catchment area so that will get. So that for the catchment area of the refinery. And that's the catchment area for the factory. Ideally, I would like to put this somewhere. And that's maybe where truck stops come in, actually. I might need a couple of these. Maybe one this side. So that's going to get that, and I put one there to get that, and then have my cargo station in the middle, and then I can ship trains to, well I can run a train with oil to there, which would serve that, and then I could perhaps ship fuel via road into Port Nelson. So yeah, I could have a train shuttling backwards and forwards delivering oil, vast quantities of oil, to make large amounts of fuel. And then I can deliver fuel into Port Nelson via the road system. Again, I could, put, I could easily put a road from the edge of that pathway up to here. Which would make sense. And then I could also put in a harbour and I could ship the excess fuel then to other areas on the map. Like I could ship fuel into Edinburgh then, across the Atlantic, which would make sense. Again, it's I'm, I'm starting in 1850, so the transport options I have available to me are quite limited. I do not have aeroplanes and stuff yet. <laughs> and there you see, look. Three fields will be removed, and it tells you um, how much it's going to cost you to tear apart the building, um, the, the farms, if you try building through them. Now, looking back at the, the population system, New York's quite heavily populated, as is Toronto. So that's going to be perhaps my first passenger route if you like my first passenger link well, on the north east coast of America um, 
can't really see any other great freight opportunities. Well, they've got loads and loads of crude oil. And again, there's a refinery there. There's also stone there, which could go into construction materials. So Ch Chicago here isn't too badly set up if you like, to provide materials. We've got stone here as well, and we've got a processing factory there. It's a shame there isn't an oil refinery on this side, because crude oil into a refinery to make oil Plastic would be very, very good. Instead, I would have to, have to, I'd have to ship it all the way around to here. But then there is one there, so that's a viable route. Crude oil refinery processing plant, and again, I could have a harbour to enable me to ship plastic to different parts of the world so this is a potentially going to be a good map and like I say this video is really an introduction to the map and what I plan to be doing going forward so um, I think to start with there's a couple of options I've got a couple of options open to me then and it probably makes sense to start with to get the most amount of money rolling in doing the passenger route so I think Berlin to Paris and potentially New York to Toronto are going to be my first two lines that I put in and construct get the passengers in and rolling and then we can look at doing the freight lines and stuff which will bring in more profit but for now for this introductory video that is it. So for now, it's goodbye from me. I will see you all again soon.